Okay, so welcome back. Uh, remember that from the previous video that we are uh, looking at this uh, probability space that you get uh, if you if your experiment is uh, picking a point at random from a square, basically. And uh, we discussed that the CDF function that you get at least on this interval, or at least on this portion of uh, R two, uh, is given by x times y. Now, uh, the first thing I want to say is that um, these two random variables up here, the two random variables that built the joint random variable, the joint distribution, uh, this sort of thing here, uh, these are called the marginal distributions. So, uh, the marginal distributions, these are. Uh, so, uh, you can go from the marginal distributions uh, to the joint distribution, and also you can go from the joint distributions back to the marginal distributions. I haven't shown you how to do that yet, uh, but uh, we will do. So, just a bit of terminology. These two distributions that make up the joint distribution, they are the marginal distributions. Okay, so now let's cover the concept of a, a joint PDF. So it's completely analogous uh, to uh, the uh, PDF in, the co in, in just a single random variable. So the joint PDF, uh, PDF, uh, given the uh, symbol little f of x and y, the joint PDF of x and y as a function now of x and y, because it, uh, it's now going to be a function of R2, is just going to be the derivative, the second derivative, with respect to x and with respect to y. So you differentiate twice, uh, once with respect to y and once partially with respect to x, uh, and you differentiate the CDF, uh, the joint CDF. So that's how you get uh, the joint P probability density function. So in this case, what we'll do is we will differentiate twice with respect to x and with respect to y, the function x uh, times y. Now, okay, so first let's partially differentiate with respect to y. And bear in mind that it doesn't matter uh, by, uh, what's it, I think it's, is it Fubini's theorem? Uh, I, I don't take that on word. Uh, there's some theorem in, um, in uh, multivariable calculus that says that uh, the derivative, that uh, basically it doesn't matter which order you differentiate in. If you ought differentiate with respect to y first, or and then differentiate it with respect to x for, uh, second, it's the same as if you differentiate with respect to x first and differentiate with respect to y second. So this is equal to uh, d2 uh, dy dx of um, f x y. There we go. Uh, I'll just put the variables in x, y. Okay, uh, so now if we want to differentiate this, uh, then firstly we differentiate it with respect to y, so we hold x a constant, well we think of x as a constant, and uh, what we get is if you differentiate that as though x was just a constant with respect to y, it just goes down to x. And then you differentiate with respect to y, and uh, sorry, x, and that just goes to 1. So we get that the PDF is equal to 1. Uh, so that makes sense, because we would have wanted the uh, probability density function to be uniform on uh, everywhere on this, um, on this square, uh, 0, 1, Cartesian product did with 0, 1. Uh, so that's excellent. Um, now what we will do is we need to discuss uh, the use of the CDF because just like in random uh, sorry the PDF just like in uh, random uh, in random variables where you could integrate the PDF to get the uh, probability that it's uh, probability that the uh, random variable is within a certain region uh, you can do the same uh, for the PDF so basically if you want if you take uh, your um, if you take your uh, in your interval, so it can be in zero one zero one. If we take this square zero one, and you want the probability now uh, that um, that uh, your put that you want the probability of some region R. So let's say this is a region R uh, in this square. So you want the probability uh, that um, x y is an element of this region. So this is, oh dear, not real numbers, it's an element of this region. So this is where it's helpful to think of joint random variables in terms of um, in terms of functions ascribing 
ordered pairs of real numbers uh, to each outcome. So if we start off with our square, so this is all possible outcomes of the experiment, then we could think of the joint random variable as ascribing to each of these uh, an ordered pair of real numbers. So it ascribes to each part of the square an ordered pair of real numbers. And now what we're, uh, and, and all of these real numbers are in the uh, set, which is the Cartesian product of the interval 0, 1 with the Cartesian product 0, 1. Uh, so you ascribe at this point down here the ordered pair 0, 0, this point down here the ordered pair 1, 0, this point up here you ascribe 0, 1, and this point over here you ascribe 1, 1. Uh, so if you ascribe ordered pairs of real numbers to every point of this square, uh, that's a useful way of thinking about the joint random variable. So there's two ways to think of it. You can think of it either in terms of the marginals and having multiple random variables defined on the same thing, or you can think of it in terms of this uh, mapping uh, onto ordered pairs. And they are effectively equivalent. You can go backwards and forwards. Uh, but in other ways, they're not equivalent because they are different concepts fundamentally. Okay, uh, so what we can then ask is if I have a region R which is in this in this uh, this uh, re this region of R2, which is 0, 1 to 0, 1. Uh, so this is a region of R2. So this is the this is this. These are numbers here. If I have a region here and I want the probability, so I'm really working with P prime. If we think of this as our original probability space, F and uh, P, then it, we could call this probability space our omega prime probability space, our F prime and our P prime then I want the probability P prime that X, Y is an element of this region and it will correspond perfectly to the uh, probability that it's in a corresponding region back down here. So i.e. if you take the image of this, the inverse image of this region, it will be an event back here because that's uh, the axioms of this being a probability space isomorphism as it were. Um, so uh, now what will just to formalize it a bit, uh, joint random variables, uh, what you are doing is you are mapping these outcomes onto an ordered pair of real numbers. And again, just as in random variables, you want the you want the probability, uh, you want the prob the, this probability space down here to be isomorphic or homomorphic in a sense to this probability space up here. And you want the probability space structure of this one to mirror the probability space structure on here. So you want correspond you want events in here to have corresponding events back here, and you want the probability of events in here to be the same as the probability of the corresponding events back here. Okay, so if we want the probability that x, y is within a region, then that is going to be equal to, this is a theorem that I'm going to uh, give you intuition at least as to why it's true, it's going to be the double integral over the region of the uh, probability density function uh, uh, of the joint random variables x and y. Uh, as a function of x and y, uh, dx, dy. Uh, so remember that although I've been talking here about this joint random variable as a function that describes ordered pairs, it's equivalent. There's, it's equivalent to that discussion of having two random variables, x and y, each mapping uh, you onto real numbers and then uh, combining them together. They're utterly equivalent. You can go from those to this and you can go from this to that. Okay, uh, so why is this, let's at least get some intuition as to why this is true. Okay, so uh, if we consider what the CDF is, so if we consider the CDF, the joint CDF of the random variables x and y, well this is the probability that, um, it's the probability that is equal to the probability that big X is less than or equal to little x, and what big Y is less than or equal to some little y. Okay, uh, so if you give me the little this little x and this little y, it's the probability that it's within this region here. Okay, so when we differentiate it with respect to x, so firstly let's start by differentiating it with respect to x. So partially differentiating this uh, CDF with respect to x. What is that going to give us? And let's imagine what it's going to, uh, if we times it by a tiny little interval delta x. So uh, it's more intuitive if we ask that uh, because uh, rather than it being a ratio, it's an absolute difference in this case. So if we ask what is the derivative, uh, with uh, partial derivative with respect to x of this CDF uh, 
times some tiny little delta x. Well, that means it's this. It's it's approximately equal to the absolute value. Uh, it's uh, it's approximately equal to um, the f uh, the cumulative distribution function. Um, Cumulative, uh, sorry, not uh, the cumulative distribution function of the joint uh, CDF of the joint random variables x and y evaluated at x plus delta x y minus f x y if evaluated x and y. So it's if if you make delta x really really small, it's a prop. It converges on being equal to this. So you can use this as an approximation if you want to study uh, how much uh, the uh, cumulative distribution function of these joint random variables will change if you change x by a value delta x. So let's get a picture for this. If we change x by some tiny little delta x, so let's say this is the point x plus delta x then now this probability density uh, this cdf here fxy evaluated at x plus delta x y is uh, the cdf evaluated at that point over there which is equal to the probability that big x is less than or equal to x plus delta x uh, and uh, y a uh, big y is less than or equal to y minus uh, the probability that x is less than or big X is less than or equal to little x, and big Y is less than or equal to little y. So, if I just move this up, uh, this, uh, if we draw another picture down here, okay, so this is our new thing here, this is our old one here, this is our old x, and this is our x plus delta x. So, the CDF evaluated at x plus delta x uh, is uh, the probability that the um, probability that you pick a point in this region and then what we're doing is subtracting off the probability that you pick a point in this region i.e. the probability that you pick it in the pink region so what we end up with is uh, that this is the probability this difference here uh, or this derivative times this tiny little delta x is approximately equal uh, to the probability of this little region that's the difference between the two, i.e. it's the probability of this little region here, okay? So, that's of width delta x. So, remember the definition of the derivative. It's the limit, uh, it's the limit of uh, the change in the CDF if you change x by some tiny little delta x and take it away from what it originally was and then divide it by delta x. So if delta x is very, very small, it's a good approximation to say that this derivative times the delta x is equal to the difference between them. So it's a good approximation if delta x is very, very small and indeed it converges on being true that the derivative of the C D joint CDF um, times this delta x is going to equal the probability that it's uh, that the um, that the uh, that you pick something in this tiny little uh, tiny little um, uh, rectangle of uh, width delta x. Okay, and remember this is a what this is your y value and this is your original x value here. Okay, now what we can ask is if we differentiate that with respect to y, differentiate with respect to y, this whole thing, d d x f of x y x, y, delta x. Keep the delta x there, and you'll see why in a moment. The, the derivative obviously should end there. And then we put the del derivative with respect to y there, and then we times it by some tiny little delta y, then what's that going to equal to? Well, again, uh, we're asking now, uh, this is, what we're asking now is, we're asking how much does this change if you make delta y absolutely tiny. So if we make delta y absolutely tiny, we're asking, we're asking not how much, um, how much the function will change, the CDF will change anymore. We're asking how much this thing changes. But this thing is equal to this. So how much is this going to change if you change it by some tiny little delta, X, delta y? It's going to change by this tiny little interval here, this tiny little box here. So this is approximately going to equal the probability of this tiny little box here. So it's roughly equal to the probability that x... Um, the x, um, hmm, how would I write that? Uh, it's, rough, it's roughly equal to the probability of that tiny little box, basically. Uh, so it's roughly equal to the probability that x, y is an element of, um, how would I write this? Um, x to x plus delta x cross y uh, to y plus delta y. Okay, and the reason is, I want to say this again because I don't know if I did a really good job of explaining it. 
this thing here, we have already agreed what this thing is. This is roughly, if you give me a value of x and a value of y, this thing here, if I, I can work this out for any x, y, you give me a value of x and you give me a y, value of y, it's roughly equal to this rectangle here, that if I change it by a delta x, uh, it's going to be equal to this rectangle. And you can, I want to stress this again, you can give me any x and you can give me any y. So if I ask, what's the derivative of this with respect to y, that means change your y position by something. So I want to get another piece of paper and redraw the picture. Okay, uh, so uh, let me say it again. This derivative with respect to x of the joint CDF of x and y as a function of x and y uh, times delta x is roughly equal to, if we have the box here, uh, then we have some point x and we have some point y then if you work this thing out for x and y, it's roughly equal to extend this rectangle down like this uh, by uh, a value delta x, and this value here is roughly going to be equal to the probability that you're going to be within that rectangle. If we then say, differentiate this with respect to y, differentiate this whole thing, d dx, um, f x y, x y, uh, delta x, then this is going to ask, and then times it by delta y, this is going to ask how much does this change if you change y by some tiny amount. So if you change y by some tiny amount, then you come up to here. So how much is the value of this rectangle that you get? Because this, remember, is the rectangle to the left down here. We're asking now if we change y by some tiny little amount uh, y, uh, and uh, how much does it change? How much does the... Um, does the probability that you are in this rectangle to the side change? And the amount by which it changes is the prob by the, the probability that you're in this tiny little rectangle x, uh, which has uh, side length here delta x and vertical uh, side length here delta y. So it corresponds to the um, to the um, to the probability that you're in that tiny little interval delta x delta y. But as far as we're concerned, delta x and delta y are just two little fixed things. You have to make them very, very small for this to even be a valid approximation. But as far as we're just concerned, uh, they're, they're just two little things. So they're just constant. So we can now differentiate this and say that this is equal to the second derivative with respect to y with respect to x of the joint CDF uh, as a function of x and y times delta x delta y. But this is what we define to be equal to the uh, joint PDF. So this is f x y x y. So the joint PDF of the two random variables times delta x delta y. So basically if you multiply the joint PDF of a function of uh, the joint PDF of the joint uh, the joint PDF uh, of the random variables as a function of x and y and then multiply it by some tiny little area delta x delta y it will approximately give you uh, the probability that you're within that uh, within this little rectangle delta x delta y so uh, if you want to work out um, the uh, probability that you are in some region r then basically it is you can just integrate this uh, pdf function x, y, um, oh dear, this, P, this joint PDF of, of x and y, uh, you can integrate that with respect to x and with respect to y over the region, and this corresponds effectively, the intuition, intuitive view of what this is, is it's saying, okay, let uh, these delta x's and delta y's become infinitesimal, then this really is true, at least it converges on being true, and what we're doing is we're splitting up into tiny little bits, and this says sum over the entire region, this PDF times these tiny little uh, uh, areas of these tiny little uh, segments that we're dividing it up into. So this effectively is dividing it up into tiny little segments, tiny little segments, Timesing it by the PDF value for at, at that seg for that segment, and then multiplying it by the area of that segment, and then adding it all up for the entire region, and that's why this is going to give you the probability uh, that uh, the uh, two values x and y is an element of the region. Okay, and similar to in the case of uh, random variables, uh, this means that if we integrate from negative infinity to infinity and from negative infinity to infinity. So if we integrate over the entire R of R2, uh, the PDF function, 
it should equal the probability that you're an element uh, that you're anywhere in R2 and that should equal 1 basically providing that obviously this is just a um, this is uh, this is a bivariate distribution in this case because you've only got two uh, contributing marginal distributions x and y if you have more uh, then you'd obviously have more integrals in here uh, so we're just looking at uh, bivariate distributions where you have two random variables at the moment uh, but that holds true in um, in um, any for any bivariate distribution.